Hey there, I need my book. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Hey, I wanted to share with you how we are using The Kind Kingdom by The Peaceful Press this year in our homeschool. I'm a homeschool mom who has three kiddos. We have a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a 12-year-old. And this is how we are making The Kind Kingdom work for us. So welcome, welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. Hey, my name is Ashley, if we haven't met yet. Hi, say hi in the comments if this is your first video. Um, if it's not your first video, so glad you're back. You, got, you are wonderful. So we've been using the Kind Kingdom this year for our family unit study, basically. And I've used a Peaceful Press before. I came across them several years ago, maybe four years ago or so. And I was using their Playful Pioneers with my kiddos when they were little. They, like my oldest was like a third grader and then I had like a kindergartner and then my little guy just kind of tagged along with all of us. So that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that year. So this year I decided to come back to a peaceful press and use their kind kingdom unit, which is kind of focused on middle ages, but not so much. It's kind of like a European history, uh, European slash United Kingdom, English, England history. And it has a guide where you're going through the entire Chronicles of Narnia series. And that is also what drew me to this. And we love C.S. Lewis. We've read uh, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe before, um, but we decided to go through the whole series uh, this whole year. So the first thing I'm loving about The Kind Kingdom is the hymns, the copywork, and the read-alouds. And I love that there's a book list that goes with a theme each month. And that's basically how I've been doing homeschool for the last several years. <laughs> that is how we do science, that is how we do history, uh, and are just read-alouds as well. So I love that uh, Jennifer Pepito has created this and it all kind of goes with the theme uh, throughout each month. And I don't have to go out searching for those things. <laughs> the book list is one of my favorite things and the read-alouds. So like I said, we're going through the Chronicles of Narnia and then there's also another read aloud that goes along with the either the historical theme or the science theme for that month. Oh, we did things like the kings and queens of England. Uh, we did uh, a little bit of medieval history theme and there were some awesome books that we got from the library about that. And that was a lot of fun. The other thing that goes along with the Kind Kingdom for the book list is fairy tales. And on the fourth day of the week that you're supposed to do, it's only a four day curriculum, which is great because that's all we use it for. But on the fourth day of the week, you know, whether it's Thursday or Friday or whatnot, you're supposed to read a fairy tale. And I found that Thursdays, which is our fourth day, is our busiest day of the week outside of the house with some of our out of the house lessons. So I nearly don't ever get to read the fairy tale with the kids. I'm really kind of bummed about that, but not too bummed. Does that make sense? Like, I'm okay that we're not reading those. Um, if we get a chance to, I do, but that's been very rare. I haven't read very many of the fairy tales, but I have the Grimm's fairy tale book. I have um, the blue fairy book uh, from Andrew, I can't remember who did it. Anyway, the blue fairy book. I have all the fairy tale books, but we haven't been getting around to that. Now that we're coming into doing Shakespeare in the second half of the year, I'm a, I'm a little nervous because I want to do Shakespeare. So what I've decided to do is not do it on Thursday. I move it to on Wednesday, I think, a different day of the week that I'm actually home with the kids and we're able to read it. So I just move it and read it, you know, during our read aloud morning time time. So that's one adaptation or change that I've made uh, that make it to make it work for my family. It does give you poems and copy work, but I haven't been able to figure out how to get our poetry memorization into our day. I feel like the way I did it with A Gentle Feast uh, was a little bit clearer and that's just the way I did it last year. This year we haven't been as focused on our poetry memorization, but we do read the poems a few times. I think they've memorized a few, not all, but maybe two or three of the poems that we've done. Uh, they are a little bit longer uh, than some of the poems we did last year, especially for my boys who are Form 1, uh, or my middle son, he, he's got a great memory. But my younger son, he does better with a little bit shorter poems, but um, my oldest, they can handle the longer poems. Okay, but we haven't memorized all of them. And for the Bible memory, I have them do it as copy work in their copy work book, 
but I have picked the Bible memory verses for my kids for this year. Not that they had bad choices, but there were just some scriptures that I wanted my kids to memorize that we haven't gotten to yet. So I just made a principle for that for myself, for, for each of us, and we use that and memorize that together um, during our morning time. So I haven't used the Kind Kingdom's uh, Bible memory passages. But I have used the hymn suggestion. So we either listen to or sing the hymn uh, for the hymn of the month that has been suggested from this curriculum. Okay, like I mentioned before, I like the book lists that come with each month. And I've been able to get all those. Sometimes I get even more, like depending on the topic, I'll just go to the library and type in the topic and just get more books on the topic if, if we want. So some of those books I read with all of the kids together. We read them all in our morning time together um, or at lunch, or we do an audiobook of it. But I've, I've been focusing on the, the Chronicles of Narnia book. But sometimes I read some of the books from the book list with the kids all together. Sometimes I assign it to one of my kids and they'll read it on their own in their own individual work time, depending on their reading level and, and the books. Um, sometimes I'll just read it to them one-on-one. -on -one. Like my, uh, my second grader, I'll take some of the books from the book list and he and I will sit together and read them. Other times I just get the books from the library and they just go into our general book basket uh, that the kids can use just at their leisure or in the bathroom is usually where they uh, look at the books in the book basket uh, or in their quiet time. With that, I haven't been using the Kind Kingdom as our main language arts. So even in the book, you know, they suggest to have a phonics program or a grammar program, and she suggested IEW, which is what we've been doing this year. So I don't use it as a full language arts program. So my youngest uses uh, Explode the Code and All About Reading Readers, for his language arts. Uh, he does a handwriting uh, curriculum as well. My fourth grader, he uses IEW Structure and Style uh, Level 1 Year A, or I get those mixed up, Level A Year 1 is what he's doing. It's so like the first like basic streaming lessons. And then my oldest, she's using US History writing lessons uh, for their language arts. But I have been loving using A Kind Kingdom for our like history and unit study together and uh, a little bit of the science. Um, my kids do get a co-op science class at their co-op, so we don't always hit up the science, but we're always talking about the things. And there's some video suggestions in the curriculum and we'll use that, and that's been really neat. And also with language arts, uh, because my oldest is doing the US history writing lessons class, um, she gets assigned books from that class. And so I don't assign her really any books <laughs> unless she wants to. She can do it optionally, but I don't assign her any books from The Kind Kingdom. She does the books that we read all together, but, but she doesn't get any extra books assigned. Uh, and you could easily do that with, you know, a sixth grader. You could take some of those books and assign them to them to read on their own. But I don't do that for her because I don't want to overwhelm her. She's already reading a lot from her IEW class so she doesn't need any extra load for her. But maybe you have a kiddo who loves to read, so you could definitely assign them all the books you want. <laughs> so that might be the case with my second grader, but he's still, you know, he's still learning to read. He's like third grade level now, but he loves to read. So we'll see what he does in the future. So as a little secret, we don't do all of the activities. We just don't. <laughs> and I think that's just the nature of curriculum in general. Like no matter what you're using, go to the beautiful, Sunlight, Kind Kingdom, uh, Master Books. Usually these curriculum plan, usually, usually these curriculum companies plan, you know, a lot, but you know, there's life that happens and then there's things that kids maybe need extra time on or things that is just not working for your family and you skip over it. Master Books. Usually these curriculum companies plan, you know, a lot, but you know, there's life that happens and then there's things that kids maybe need extra time on or things that is just not working for your family and you skip over it. And that's okay. <laughs> and that is definitely my philosophy on homeschooling and teaching is you go with what your kids' strengths and what their weaknesses are and your interests as well. I think it's okay and good to follow your interests. Um, there is times where you have to do something because you have to, but I especially believe at the elementary level, it's a little better to follow interests. Maybe as they get more into middle school and high school, then it'll be more of a like, 
no, you need to do this because it's your assignment. Uh, but as they're younger, I don't want my kids to be turned off from, from school and from learning uh, at a young age. So what I'm saying is, is we don't always have time because we have some of out of the house activities. We have piano lessons, we have karate lessons, uh, and there's and we have a co-op that's every other week. And we like to you know hang out with friends or go to a park sometime if it's nice weather. Uh, so with our you know life and our flow and our rhythms for our life, we don't always get to all the activities, and that's okay with me. So I am kind of bummed. I would like to do more of the recipes in the recipe book but like I said our fourth day of the week Thursday is our busiest day out of the house so I either need to move that to a different day or just do it on our Fridays which we usually don't do school on Fridays but it's cooking something so we could cook it you know and eat it on Friday night for dinner or have it for the weekend oh I want to share one last thing that I figured out that was just driving me nuts so I didn't realize that there's only 30 weeks for this curriculum there's only 30 weeks. So it's not a full like 36 week curriculum that most homeschool curriculums or school curriculums use. And I was getting a little nervous about that because I mean, I love that this is only 30 weeks because you have several weeks in there to have a break because we like to do six weeks on one week off. And then you have several weeks, a couple weeks in there to um, have sickness. You know, there's lots of times where somebody's sick or everybody's sick and you just do not get to the lessons. And it also only has uh, eight months. It's not a nine month curriculum. So it also has stuff in there where you don't have to do school in most of December, which is what happened. I basically scrapped the kind kingdom in December. We just did basic school. We just did basic math and reading, a little bit of writing and that was it. And, and then December was, and then there was Christmas things. So I didn't get to Kind Kingdom at all really during December, like I said in another video. So I was getting a little nervous. I was like, like oh no, I'm gonna have to skip month five and then just jump in with month six. And then we'll, you know, go through the rest of the year. When I started looking at my schedule, I noticed that I didn't have to skip month five. Like I didn't have to. I even doing month five now, it puts us at, it gives us a good week break after six weeks in February. It gives us a spring break in April. And then that puts us into like week one or two in May, which is like perfect. Like that is exactly where I wanted to land. I love to end our, you know, big school unit curriculum by the middle of May and not continue it any further because we love May. It's beautiful here in the Midwest. We love it here. So that is one of our favorite months to get outside. Just, you know, just be, just be together. And so I was so happy because I looked at month five and I was like, ooh, this one looks like fun because you're studying Shackleton and exploration and you're learning about a shipwreck that was in the Antarctic and their expedition and all that stuff. It was called, um, what's it called? Endurance, <laughs> which is like a really cool story to learn about these explorers. And I wanted to study it. And it goes along with Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which we'd already read last year. So we're reading Prince Caspian now. So there's that. But again, we adapt because that's our school. So I was so happy to find I didn't have to skip the month five recommendations. And we can just finish month five and go right into month six. So whew, that was a huge load off my shoulders and I'm thankful. So thank you, Jennifer Papito. Thank you <laughs> for doing that. She knows Charlotte Mason homeschool moms, she knows. <laughs> so that is how I've been using the Kind Kingdom this year. So I wanna encourage you, adapt it to your family. That's what I want to leave you with. If you're a Charlotte Mason mom, if you're new to Charlotte Mason, let me know. I have lots of videos on that and I'd love to talk about that. I am not, you, I'm not, as you would say, 100% Charlotte Mason. I adapt it still and use a little bit more eclectic things for some of our subjects. But when it comes to history and language arts, then I'm definitely all in with Charlotte Mason style. So I love, love living books. That is basically it. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, be sure to subscribe if you'd like to hear more about The Kind Kingdom coming up. 
Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I would love to chat with you down there. And I'm so glad you're here. And I love sharing with you our homeschool experience and how things are going. So I hope I answered your questions. If I didn't, just let me know in the comments and I would be happy to chat with you down there. You rock at homeschooling. Go find his joy among the noise. See ya.